We get a lot of people asking how we insulate the buildings and the most common way we insulate is just with a bat insulation. So you can see we've already put the strapping on and then we add the bat insulation behind the strapping. The biggest thing to make sure is that you have no gaps and you wanna make sure it's nice and tight in there, which the guys have done a really good job of on this one. Because if you do have any gaps, you could get a frost line coming through where that is. And then once the insulation's in, then we'll put the vapor barrier on over top of that. Very important place to insulate is the ceiling. And so typically what we're doing is loose fill insulation. So, and what that is, is it's a uh, insulation comes out in these bales and you push it into a blower and that blower actually just breaks it up and that, that stuff piles in there in the attic and gives you insulation. So we're typically doing R44 in our attics. That's just been the, that's the standard that we, that we do. And then when you have a building like this one, for example, we have very limited space in the trusses. So what we're doing is we're going to bat insulation in the trusses. And so we're putting R28 insulation with R20 on top of that. So we have a total of R48 in the ceiling of this building. So this thing is gonna be super well insulated. Between where the face of the post is and the face of the girt, there's actually an inch and a half gap there. Now, it doesn't seem like it's very, very useful or important until we put that vapor barrier on over top. And so what that does is you've got the insulation and you have an inch and a half gap and then the vapor barrier. And so when you look at insulation, its whole purpose is to hold air in little pockets, these separate little pockets of air. And by doing that, the cold or the hot, it slows down that transfer, the more pockets of air there is there. Everywhere that there's straps on the inside of the wall, we have that inch and a half air gap, which just acts as another layer of insulation because that air, that air is not moving out, it's not moving in, it's not getting heated, it's not getting cooled. It's basically just sitting there, it's just one more barrier to that heat or cold transfer from the inside to the outside of the building. This is a very solid building. You can see the engineer had us put this bit of an X brace in here. So that's uh, two ply actually. There's one butted into the post, one over top, and that's running up to the center and then up to the top of the post there. And that's gonna keep the building strong this way so it can't rack at all. So it's, it's very solid and it's uh, actually probably overkill for this building because we're in a bit of a sheltered neighborhood here and there's never gonna be any crazy winds coming through, but the wind loads for the area are probably a bit higher and that's why it's got this extra bracing in here to make it really solid. We've had some people ask, what sort of R value do we get in our buildings? Number one is gonna be the size of the post. So in this case, this building it has two by eight posts. So that gives us seven and a quarter inches of wall cavity. And that's the space from the outside wall girts to the inside wall girts. So with that two by eight post, we have seven and a quarter inches, which means that we can get R28 insulation in there. So what's kind of cool about that is that most new homes are being built two by six exterior walls. And so they're only getting R20 as well. So in some cases, we actually get a better R value than, um, than a typical new home. The other thing is the ceiling. Very important place to insulate. We're typically doing R44 in our attics. The other thing that's really important to, to think about when you're looking at ins insulation is the vapor barrier. Right here, you can see it now with the vapor barrier going on. They've just started putting it on here. So this building's really nice because the vapor barrier reaches floor to ceiling. So only have to do one row of it. So then along the top where it ends and along the bottom where it ends, it's gonna get the acoustic seal. What that vapor barrier is there for is to prevent condensation and to seal up drafts from being able to come in and out of the building. So what we do with our vapor barrier, that's a little bit different than would be in like typical residential construction is that our vapor barrier can go right from the foundation of the building all the way up to the trusses, the roof system. And then without any break there, it can just come right over Like it's just, it's a full sealed unit. And so one thing that we do to make sure that we have that sealed up really well is where that plastic vapor barrier comes right down to the foundation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna seal that right to our our bottom grade board here, acoustic seal, 
to seal that to the foundation just to make sure that the whole thing is fully encased. 